In this video, we're going to be solving multiple step equations. In the last video, we listed all the steps for solving multiple step equations. So you can refer back to those steps. On number five, the equation is 5x plus 3 is equal to 2 times x plus 6. So I'm going to draw my line down the equal sign first, and I notice that on the left side there's nothing to do. So I can just bring that side of my equation down. But on the right side, I do have to distribute the 2 to both terms in the parentheses. So 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 6 is 12. Right, now that both sides are simplified, it's time to start moving my terms. I want to get my variable terms on one side of the equation and my constant terms on the other. So I'm going to move my 2x to the other side only because it's smaller, but it really doesn't matter what side your variable term is on. So I have a positive 2x. To move it to the opposite side, I'm going to do a minus 2x. That zeroes out the x's on the right side. So 5x minus 2x leaves me with 3x plus 3 is equal to 12. Now it's time to move the constant away from the variable term to the opposite side. It's a positive 3, so to move it to the other side, I need to do a negative 3. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So the 3's zero each other out on the left side, and that leaves me with 3x is equal to 9. And then that very last step is to divide by the coefficient of 3. 3 divided by 3 leaves me with 1x. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So my solution is x is equal to 3. Number six, it's three times three x minus five is equal to 10 x. So in this particular problem, I need to get rid of the parentheses on the left side by distributing. So three times three x is nine x, and three times negative five is negative 15. And then there's nothing to do on the right side, so I'm gonna bring down that 10 x. Well, I'm going to get my x's together, and I'm going to move my x, get my x's together on the right side this time for two reasons. One, because I like to move my smaller x to the side of the larger, and 9 is smaller than 10, but also because I don't want to have an, um, nothing on the right side of my equation and everything on the left side. So I'm going to move the 9x to the right side by subtracting 9x from both sides. The 9x's cancel each other out, leaving me with negative 15 is equal to 10x minus 9x leaves me with just 1x. Now if you want to write 1x, you can, and you can just leave it just like that. Now it's fine to leave it as negative 15 is equal to x, or you can always just rewrite it and say x is equal to negative 15. Either is correct. Number seven is 2x plus five is equal to five plus five minus three x. So on the left side, there's nothing to do. There's no like terms to combine. It's completely simplified. But on the right side, I have like terms that I can combine. I have a 5x and a minus 3x. When I put those two together, I get 5 minus 3 is 2x plus 5. So you may notice something right now. I'm going to keep going um, just so that you can um, see it a little bit clearer. But now it's time to get my variables together on one side and my constants together on the other side. So I'm going to move my 2x, because I like to move my variables first, and I'm going to move the 2x on the right side over to the left side. So it's a positive 2x, so I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. Well, the 2x's zero each other out on the right side, 
but they do the same thing on the left side. So I don't have any variables left. I am just left with this statement that says five is equal to five. Well, this is a curious kind of equation. It has a name, it's called an identity equation. And this happens whenever we have a, an equation where my variables cancel out and I'm left with a true statement. Five is equal to five, that is true. Anytime you have an identity equation, when your solution is no variables and you have a true statement, that solution is all real numbers. That's what my solution is, all real numbers. What that means is that any number I plug into my equation is gonna work. I could plug in three and it would give me a true statement at the end. I could plug in negative two and I would, could get a true statement. I could plug in a half. No matter what number I plug in, it's gonna work. So this is um, called an identity. You don't need to know that, but you do need to know that when you have a true statement, then you um, have a uh, solution of all real numbers. Now, if I would have moved my fives, then I would have ended up with a statement that says 2x is equal to 2x. Or I could have stopped right here. 2x plus 5 is equal to 2x plus 5. I didn't need to keep going. I can see right here that I have the exact same thing on both sides of the equation. So I have a true um, statement, so my solution is all real numbers. Now keep in mind the other kind of equations that we've been working with are called conditional. They only work when we get that one solution. Most, most of the time when you're solving equations, they are conditional. You have one solution or two solutions. We'll see more solutions later in the semester, but most solutions are conditional. But when your variables disappear and you have a true statement at the end, the solution is all real numbers. All right, let's look at number eight. We have two times x minus two is equal to four x minus the quantity six plus two x. So there is definitely a lot going on on this problem. So this line down my equal sign is very important. So first on the left side, I'm going to distribute my two to both terms inside the parentheses. So two times two x is two x, two times negative two is negative four. Now on the right side, I need to distribute to get rid of parentheses, but I'm distributing the sign changer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change the signs of the terms that are in the parentheses. So I'm gonna bring down the 4x because it's in front of the sign changer. So right now the six is positive, but sign changer makes it a negative six x. And the two x is positive, but sign changer makes it a negative two x. Now I notice that I have some like terms on the right side that I can combine. I have a 4x and a negative 2x. So 4x minus 2x leaves me with 2x and then minus 6. And then on the left side, I'm going to bring down that 2x minus 4. Again, you may notice something right now, but I'm going to keep going so it's a little bit more obvious. And I'm going to now get my x's together on the same side. So I'm gonna move my 2x that's on the right side over to the left side by subtracting 2x from both sides. Well, the 2x um, zeroes out each other out on the right side and the x's zero each other out on the left side. So now we have the statement that says negative four is equal to negative six. Well, that is not true. This is called a contradiction. This is a false statement. 
So a false statement means it's in a contradiction. That's the kind of equation that it is. Whenever you have a, an equation that leaves you with a false statement, a contradiction, the solution is no solution. That means no number will work when I plug it in. Nothing works. I can try all day long, but nothing will work. So the answer to this problem is no solution. Again, most of the time you're going to have a conditional equation where you just get a solution or two solutions, depending on what kind of equation it is. This situation, because we had something that was false, then it was a contradiction, so there is no solution.